Hello, this is Leadership in an Age of Technology Disruption. My name is Peter Mohorov. And this is a dissertation defense presentation to the faculty of the USC Russia School of Education. The statement of the problem pertains to operational sustainability and meeting the state chancellor's office vision for success. Additionally, overcoming budget reductions due to dwindling enrollment, retention, and transferability. California community colleges are faced with new administrative requirements set by the state chancellor's office by increasing accountability and gaining controls of the budgets. The value proposition is focused on programs which are offered and add a direct value to student planning, enrollment management, and the graduate programs. The vision for success is focused on a needed change in the outcomes and development of the economic engine of California and creating new job opportunities within the state. California Community Colleges face a very serious challenge today. Despite its great size and scope, the system's overall performance lags far behind what California needs to be for an educated workforce and future planning. The world is changing dramatic dramatically, and the demands of the colleges need to change as well. There is no doubt that educators across California are working tirelessly to teach and bring the standards up to help us as a state get ahead. Finally, the use of technology to meet these program goals and support institutional success is very important. The leadership perception and use of technology to support organizational success is paramount to this research. The importance of addressing this, pro this problem implies and focuses on the fiscal impact on operations. Clearly defined pathways for student success, addressing the downward spiral of enrollment and the use of technology and innovation to invoke efficiencies in operations. Operations across the community colleges are shifting to become more fiscally accountable. Rather than the traditional full-time equivalency count and submission on census date and getting funded based on that count, Funding is now shifting to new metrics. The pathway model outlines programs for students with a clear start and finish to degree of program of study. Like the cohort model and very much like the British educational system, this process called guided pathways with the community colleges provides a means to support consistent and structured models for students to remain focused and on track. The use of technology Personally, I have a vested interest in technology, the implementation and efficiency of different services to improve operations, engagement, communication, and introduce new early intervention support systems before it becomes too late for a student. Danielle, in 2015, wrote that many educational institutions use data to make better decisions about operational directions. The author identified challenges faced by higher education leaders including student enrollment and graduation. He also explored the potential for data analysis to address student enrollment and graduation problems. Daniel further elaborated that the existence of technological tools such as predictive analytics applications that translate to intricate data patterns into meaningful information with practical use can lead to success. The organization, the organization of focus is a community college based here in Southern California, FC, full college. FC supports 15,800 students per term. FC also provides 55 associate degrees, 58 transfer majors, and 145 vocational programs. Relevant research, student enrollment and applicable strategies, operational efficiencies, performance-based funding, and information technology. Focusing on student enrollment and applicable strategies, this is an adopted process to recruit students and involves a host of services including high school visits, advertising vocational programs, digital media investments, and appealing to the opportunities of jobs and the opportunity to acquire new skill set to gain employment. Enrollment strategies includes assessment, planning, budgeting, and IT. 
there is a balance to which the faculty to student ratios need to be clearly monitored to ensure quality of and teaching and learning are occurring. Operational efficiencies. Bell Field in 2015 provided three suggestions for, the, for community colleges to improve efficiencies. They are, number one, increase faculty productivity through the use of part-time instructors. Number two, increase the instructor to student ratio, thereby increasing class sizes. And number three, use of technology resources to identify at-risk students and issues before it's too late and dropout may occur. Performance-based funding. The method emphasizes a cost per completion as a priority rather than a cost per student. This method for determining community college budget uses accountability criteria, also known as performance indicators, which institution must meet to receive some or all of their funding. Information technology, the use of IT services to improve processes are relevant to the organizational efficiency and effectiveness by facilitating innovative methods that are less expensive across time and geographic locations by improving the decision-making efficiencies for the stakeholders. Data should be the guide to institutional decisions about how to allocate the necessary funding and support services to enable success within the organization. The knowledge, motivation, and organization influences. Clark and SD's framework to help identify gaps with goals and performance metrics by better understanding the influences related to the knowledge, motivation, and organizational resources. This research focuses on FC's leadership and their ability to meet performance goals by increasing student success. Additionally, technology, a focus on technology and applicable systems which will aid in achieving this goal by providing the means to easily analyze student data to identify academic trends and facilitate proactive methods as follow-up actions. Knowledge influences. The procedural process to understand the methods in obtaining information for analysis, interpretation, and intervention will be beneficial to the programs at FC. Grossman in 2011 elaborated that the contribu contributions have proven to be highly crucial for the learning, retention, generalization, and maintenance of skill and organized into two categories. The knowledge of technology adoption, which includes the cognitive ability, self-efficacy, motivation, and perceived utility of training. Communication, which is the behavior modeling, support, opportunity to perform, and follow-up. So the knowledge influences in this particular study we looked at the effective use of technology to track student performance and how to communicate and ensure engagement between the workforce and the students. The motivational influences. These are broken into two categories, which are the self-efficacy and expectancy value. Self-efficacy, FC's vice presidents, deans, and directors need to know their purpose and believe that their efforts they make is having an impact on student success and applying the concepts of making informed decisions with data. Expectancy value. FC, vice presidents, deans, and directors need to see the value of technology, such as predictive analytics and communication tools, as an aid to support FC's strategic goals and be an advocate for the technology tools to improve performance goals with their peers. The outcomes will help in the attainment of success by using technology resources and in achieving institutional goals. Organizational influences, these are broken into cultural settings and define roles and responsibilities. Now, the college leadership at FC must trust the importance of enhancing and developing communication channels with college stakeholders and ensuring knowledge, skill, and motivation operate in synchronicity. Development into department communication channels for the vice president, deans, and directors, and employees. The organizations need to have roles and responsibilities outlined to aim and highlight connections between the departments. Now, the methodology that I use is a qualitative research and comprised of interviews and document analysis. The interviews, guided by the protocols developed for this study, 
conducted with the vice presidents of FC vice presidents, deans, and directors. The interview protocol guided the discussion and addressed the research questions. The document analysis was part of a study where the agendas, minutes of meetings, and reports. Examples include the Strategic Technology Plan, Media Minutes, and Enrollment Management Committee Minutes. Findings. The two research questions in particular here are, what would the stakeholders' knowledge and motivation to help FC achieve 100% adoption of technology to support student success? The second was, what are the interaction between the organizational culture and context of the stakeholders' knowledge and motivation? Findings is broken down by the knowledge, motivation, and organization. The knowledge findings the purpose was to effectively evaluate the understanding and use of technology to track student performance, communicate with students to support academic progress, program persistence, and graduation. The researcher found that there is a general understanding of how technology can be used to support student success. However, there's a room for improvement in developing standard operating procedures to effectively implement and adopt technology such as predictive data analytics, technology, and engagement, PDATE. Motivation findings. The steps, FCs in this stepping in the right direction. Participants indicated that the use of data analytics tools, such as Civitas, aided FC in making more informed decisions, thus enabling FC to achieve its strategic goals. However, the feedback revealed that there is a need for more effective communication among FC departments, and also showed that not all FC staff clearly understood the overall technology adoption plan within their departments. Participants interviewed emphasized the need for continuous training and communication in order to convey information to highlight the value of the work and effort being done. Organizational findings. A better understanding of roles, responsibility, and provisions of resources was expressed as an area in which FC has made vast progress. However, there is a need for continued improvement. FC leadership team expressed optimism on the overall direction by the adoption of technology in determining the actions needed to be supportive to the student body and overall organizational performance. For example, at the establishment of the data coaches in helping FC improve data analytics processes and communication amongst departments was a step that FC was taken and headed to. Recommendations. The knowledge recommendations. Procedural knowledge provide training on how to effectively communicate with administrators on technology, data models, and early intervention tools to help improve student retention and graduation and overall student success. The motivation recommendations focus on the self-efficacy. This is putting together goal-oriented training and opportunities for feedback in assessing learning. On the expectancy value, Utilizing training modules that focus on rationals such as the importance of the utility value of technology to support FC strategic goals. Now, this includes introducing the vice presidents, deans, and directors to similar and credible models which can foster a positive value. Recommendations for the organization. On the cultural setting, want to foster the use of technology such as dashboards to aid in determining the performance metrics within the college and also to help with the communication across the organization. A visual representation and easy access to understanding the performance at a given time is very, is very important in having a glimpse and seeing um, the performance the indicators of, uh, of a current operations. These resources, having resources such as the data coaches uh, can help with the training and mentors for the FC vice presidents, deans, and directors. 
that coordination and communication between the data coaches, mentors, and having ease of access to data adds a tremendous value um, in knowing the just-in-time performance of the organization. So this, this is a added um, support system with the use of technology, as I mentioned, with the dashboards can aid in success for FC moving, moving forward. This concludes my research at USC on this particular topic. Um, I wanna say thank you to the committee and give you a little glimpse into who I am. My name is Peter Maharaj. There I am in this picture, in my gown, very proud to wear this, and holding the TAM. When I was asked in my first class at USC on the campus why I wanted to do a doctoral program, my adolescent answer is that I really like that hat. Um, and I still do, as you can see me ad, uh, admiring it on that day. Um, I'm originally from an island in the Caribbean called Trinidad, and I've been in the US for about 22 years. I came here by accident. Um, I came to Orange County to a tour of UCI, and um, I fell in love with Southern California. Um, I decided to pursue another undergrad degree, which was in uh, computer science and information systems at Long Beach State. The internet was happening around the same time and I wanted to know how to build stuff. I wanted to know how to build websites, databases, applications, and I, I fell in love with the technology. More so, I fell in love with the way one can communicate with end users of the technology on process improvement and change management. Um, after Long Beach State, I went to National University. I got uh, my first master's degree there. Uh, computer science and educational technology. While in that program, I started teaching computer science and computer forensics uh, part-time while I worked in the community college environment, the community college field. Um, after some time, I got tired of, of the educational uh, environment and opted to, to go into private industry and became a consultant, management consultant, and was working off of uh, Silicon Valley. Around the same time, I decided to go back for my MBA at the institution that attracted me to Southern California, which was UCI. Um, there at UCI um, and the MBA program opened, it grinded new lenses for me. I saw things in a different perspective, really on the business and finance side, the economic side, which is a passion of mine. I traveled quite a bit to Asia. I love the study of ASEAN, uh, Southeast Asia region, trade, and economics and um, just just that whole region is very fascinating to me. Um, and while I was there too, uh, while I was at, at the UCI program, um, I decided that I wanted to continue on with uh, my, my education and pursue a doctoral degree. And that's how I ended up with the USC program. So besides the cool Tam and gown and the cool folks that are hearing or listening to this presentation, USC uh, provided a program which allowed me the flexibility wherever I can work um, and also become educated. I entered back into, um, into community college as a director of IT and been working in my current job for three years. So what am I going to do with this new knowledge? Well, I've applied a lot of the knowledge I've already gained in this program within my current job. It's been very, very beneficial. Um, and within, even within my lectures in Thailand and Singapore, I've, I've really enjoyed this, this whole journey. Um, it's, it's not been easy. It's been very tough. I've, I've had my, my personal struggles, uh, but it's, um, it's, it's the journey, not the destination that one takes. Every step provides a new perspective on how, um, how life is transformative. I'm appreciative for all this, all the, the, the dialogue, discussions, lectures, communication um, with my, uh, my faculty members and my colleagues. And more so, this new knowledge is going to become applicable within my pathway in my educational journey. 
and my professional journey. I do lecture about this topic uh, throughout the, the state um, at different conferences, and I, I'm looking to build upon this opportunity for others in order to improve those that I serve in this particular field. Now, is this information relevant to higher education only? No, it's not. In private sector, it is very important. The clock and ST's model is, is so, so relevant to many areas beyond education. I see so many connections and you know, it's, it's really painting a picture of the value of change within an organization and the ability to engage the workforce, understanding the customer, understanding technology, and taking the best steps forward in order to become an effective change agent within an organization. So the knowledge gained from USC, this program, the faculty, and the rigor that's, um, that's, that's provided is really beneficial to areas beyond higher education. And I'm very appreciative for the learning opportunities that have been provided to me. Now in conclusion, 2020 has been a very rough year so far. There are many opportunities um, that have evolved out of the pandemic, the COVID-19 and um, the COVID-19 virus and the changes within uh, organizations. So lockdown, distance education, uh, remote work, they've all had have had a transforming effect on institutions, both private and public. The concern I have for further research on this is really on the psychological framework uh, of employees and the paradigm shift that occurs with that uh, within an organization. So um, how, how are organizations going to um, navigate these challenging times? How is the knowledge, the motivation and the organization is going to adjust to ensure that success and depending on what your measurement of success is, how is that going to be achieved? How is the workforce going to continue to have procedural knowledge on accomplishing a particular task, on getting through the, um, their daily routines? What is the motivation? What are the intrinsic motivators within the organization, within that person for the organization? And how would they um, find that, that the catalyst for, for success, personal success as well as organizational success. The organization must transform in order to help accommodate these changes. And the organization itself, how, what, what, are the, what are the cultural settings and cultural values? How are those going to adjust accordingly to support the workforce, to support the customers that they serve, be it students or, or whoever they're serving? So these shifts are, are um, provides a great opportunity at this time to uh, look, at, look at the ways that we are conducting our business. And in this particular study for higher education, how do we support our faculty within this distance education, remote work environment? With an IT perspective, there is a massive amount of time spent in IT security and ensuring that uh, concise uh, and access to information is, is important. I've spent the past six months dilig diligently working on infrastructure planning, security planning, VPN, voice over IP planning, a remote access for students, uh, taking labs into the cloud, making sure that we're monitoring usage and statistics to support the decisions that we're making. So it's been a very, a very busy period, uh, but one that is worth uh, um, a lot of uh, encouragement because the success rates are good in the sense that um, we are providing the, the, the training, the knowledge conveyance and the support to our employees. Um, and I find this very fascinating. Back to um, some, uh, some issues with the, the vision for success on the chancellor's side, there might be an adjustment 
um, and how the funding is going to affect because enrollment is actually much lower now uh, before um, the COVID-19. With COVID-19, that, that drop-off has is, is, is doubled for us quite a bit. And the funding is going to really have uh, an impact on the operating um, effects for, for the college. So the vision for success and the student uh, success funding formula is going to most likely be delayed in the implementation phase. Uh, they call it the whole harmless here in California. And um, until there, there's a vaccine and a control of the COVID-19 virus, um, the successful implementation of the Vision for Success or the State Chancellor's um, uh, Vision for Success initiative is most likely going to get delayed until uh, this, this uh, is resolved, this virus is resolved and business can return to normal. So I would like to thank uh, the committee for spending the time and listening to this presentation and always fight on. Thank you very much.